Good morning. This is Christian Mostert. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Walden Associates. Today we're going to be talking about the benefits of a fuel management system. At the end of the presentation, I'll be taking a few questions. So if you uh, think of questions as we're going through the presentation, please type them in and I'll try to answer as many as I can at the end. All right, let's get right to it. So first, what is a fuel management system? Now, some of you may already know the answer, but let's just cover it anyway. Now, fuel management system uses cutting edge technology to allow you to electronically maintain, monitor, measure, and therefore control your fuel purchases, inventories, and consumption of fuel. Now, the system gathers and stores data. It produces reports for management analysis. It improves budgeting, projections, and other fuel related decision making. You can get tighter consumption control, more accurate cost analysis, and better tax accounting with a fuel management system. It provides you those benefits. You're actually better able to meet regulatory and other public reporting requirements as well. Now, the system uses a fuel controller or a fuel management unit, and we'll talk about this in more detail later, but it uses this unit to authorize users and vehicles before turning on the fuel dispenser. It is the brains of the fueling operation. A fuel management system can also use a hands-free RFID transmitter known as an automotive information module that fits around a vehicle's fueler neck to authorize a vehicle, but more importantly, to retrieve vital vehicle operating information from a corresponding transmitter on the gas nozzle itself. The system also uses odometer per hour readings to calculate vehicle efficiency and fuel consumption. It alerts you when maintenance needs are detected. This allows you to have a more effective fleet maintenance operation, which will help your vehicles last longer. Now, one of the greatest assets of fuel management systems is that they can be used with any type of liquid or gaseous fuel, including alternative fuels such as hydrogen, natural gas, or propane. When should I consider investing in a fuel management system? Well, there's several situations when you that you probably encountered that would make you think, hey, maybe I should consider a fuel management system. One of those would be, you suspect you're losing fuel through unaccounted for fuel loss. So what's unaccounted for fuel loss, right? Well, this could be just outright theft. Maybe it's bad record keeping, you know, like a paper and pencil on a clipboard kind of thing. Or you're combining the records, or com records are being combined for multiple vehicles on one transaction. That's where a truck pulls up, it fills up, the truck behind it pulls up, it gets filled up as well, and then you just record the transaction once down on the clipboard. So that truck that only took 30 gallons, looks like it took 60. So you're having trouble tracking, you know, perhaps a second way is you're having trouble tracking fuel consumption for each vehicle. Uh, perhaps the odometer readings are not being reported correctly, or three vehicles pull up in a line and only one vehicle is written down as though I just described. Basically, you're drastically over-reporting the fuel used. Uh, you could be relying on the honor system. This would be the clipboard, pen, and pencil to record your fuel transactions. Hey, who filled up? Write your odometer reading down. What truck was it? You know, I'm not suggesting here that everybody's a thief, but I gotta tell you, when gas hits $5 a gallon and that loose accounting system's in place, that unregulated dispenser starts looking real tempting. Maybe you already have a fuel management system, but it just no longer works. Maybe it never worked. Maybe it's easily circumvented. Maybe it doesn't even have any recording capabilities that do anything to help you. This is a good time to consider an upgrade to a fuel management system. Perhaps you've uh, run into the situation where diesel fuel got pumped into a gasoline vehicle or a gasoline got pumped into a diesel vehicle. That is an extremely costly problem. You know, right then, that vehicle has to be taken off service. The entire fuel system has to be flushed out that vehicle is down and not working for you. A fuel management system can help prevent that. Probably been performing month end fuel reconciliation reports before or cross department chargebacks. Those are so time consuming and frustrating that, you know, if you don't have a good reporting system, one that works for you, one that's almost automatic, you probably have to block a half day just to make sure that this gets done correctly. It requires lots of oversight. Good systems that are in place make this a few clicks rather than a half day of your time and your accountants. You wish your drivers would tell you something when their vehicle 
needs to be main, uh, worked on. You know, you don't want to wait to just discover, hey, how long's that uh, check engine light been on? Oh, well, sorry, I, I guess it's been on a couple weeks. Yeah, well, a couple weeks, that could be the difference between an extremely costly problem or just simply replacing, uh, you know, a, like making an O2 sensor adjustment or replacing one. So you want to know what's going on with those vehicles right away and good fuel management systems have a way to tell you exactly what's going on with your vehicles. Finally, maybe just hate the idea of wasting money when there's a more effective way of preventing it. Now, who? Who should consider a fuel management system? Well, your bottom line for one. I mean, fuel is expensive and it tends to be the second most costly expense after payroll. But seriously, any organization that maintains their own fuel tanks and their own fleets should consider a fuel management system. Now, a fleet could consist of fleet operators or fleet management companies, and fleets of any size can see a benefit. We've installed a fuel management system in a fire department that had five trucks and their own fuel tank because they saw the benefit of controlling and understanding their fueling practices. Regional fleets, cargo, service vehicles, executive fleets. Uh, those executive fleets even manage where fuel is handled by the management company. They can see a benefit. Bus companies, utility companies, marinas, fixed-based operators at airports, whether you're fueling airplanes kept at the field or fly-ins or mo using mobile tankers, all can see the security and accountability benefits of a fuel management system. Police, fire, and emergency vehicle fleets are other op uh, other fleets that can see benefits. One big one is government fleets. Whether you have your executive cars for your board and your supervisors, work trucks and vans, heavy equipment like payloaders, all can see benefits uh, from the top five reasons for having a fuel management system. Okay, so, you know, maybe you're starting to think, oh, maybe I should be checking this out. Well, where? Where can I find some information on a fuel management system? Okay, well there are many fuel management systems out there and they all have their pros and cons. Now here at Walden, we tend to recommend Fuel Master to our clients. Now let me be clear, at the time of this recording, we are not a Fuel Master distributor. We have no plans to become a Fuel Master distributor. We have a working relationship with Fuel Master where we understand their products so that we can effectively manage the implementation of their products for our clients. There are other products out there that may be better for you, and I suggest you check them out. Uh, with FuelMaster, I'd like to talk about that for just a few seconds. FuelMaster is made by Syntec Systems located in Tallahassee, Florida. Now, we've evaluated a lot of fuel management systems, and we chose FuelMaster for the following reasons. They're the fuel management vendor for the entire United States military. That means their systems have to work in the most extreme weather conditions, extremely hot and extremely cold. And that range fits our clients' needs, as does probably yours. They also have to be fully supported because the military can't wait until it's convenient to get help when problems arise. It has to be solved right then and there. The fuel management units, or the FMUs, those things that sit on the fuel islands, they're designed and built here in the United States. They're not designed and manufactured elsewhere and then privately labeled. Finally, the customer support is second to none. They have multiple levels of support, but if you really run into a major issue, they will let you speak to one of their software engineers that designed the system. FuelMaster constantly upgrades and improves their products and they stand by what they make. And I really find that, that access to lots of levels of the customer support eliminates a lot of problems when you're implementing a fuel management system or using a fuel management system. So if you're interested in FuelMaster, check out myfuelmaster.com for more information. Let's talk about how a fuel management system works. Now, by the, this question, I mean, how is a fuel management system implemented? What are its components? So let's describe two situations that are encountered when implementing a fuel management system. First, new tank system. Something changes, regulations, the tanks are leaking, they're old, whatever. You wanna pull them out of the ground. So if you're replacing your fueling tanks for any reason, now is a great time to consider including a fuel management system with the tank upgrades. The conduits, the electrical power, the data connections, tank monitoring units like VitaRoot, those can all be considered at this stage or during the design stage of the new tank system so that installation and implementation can just run smoothly, just be part of the package. But you can also retrofit existing systems or existing tank systems is specifically what I'm referring to. In most cases, retrofitting an existing system will apply. 
You can even replace old fuel management units or hey, if you're installing one for the first time, that's okay. A fuel management unit can be retrofitted to existing tanks and dispensers in most cases. Usually the age of the dispensers is the biggest hurdle. Dispensers without pulsers may have to be replaced and additional retrofits may be needed, but it can work. The takeaway here is that a fuel management system can be made to fit your particular situation without taking away any of its benefits. So let's briefly talk about how a fuel management system works. First, there's a fuel management unit. That's that gray T looking box in the middle of the graphic. Now that gets installed on the fuel island. The unit's tied to the dispensers. It's the brains of the fuel management operation. It controls all the hoses, turns the pumps on and off. It's the gatekeeper. A user must interact with the FMU in some way, and there are lots of oper options for interacting with an FMU. The most basic is a keypad, like on an ATM. You enter your user ID, maybe the vehicle ID, you enter the, the vehicle odometer reading, it rec the FMU recognizes the user and the vehicle ID, and it authorizes the dispenser to dispense fuel. Now, this prohibits diesel from finding its way into the tank of a gasoline vehicle and vice versa, because the FMU actually manages the two dispensers and won't turn on the diesel dispenser if it's a gasoline vehicle. But a user could also insert a fleet card, like a credit card, that was issued to a particular user or vehicle, or a computer chip key called a Pro Key. It's kind of like a looks like a little USB key housed with plastic. You could insert this into a socket. That USB key or that Pro Key is connected to a particular vehicle um, payload or etc. And when it gets plugged in, the FMU recognizes it. Oh, Ford F-150. Hello. And what's your odometer? Punch it in, and then it dispenses the fuel. Um, and again, we've also talked about like the RFID aim units. That's kind of a black plastic ring. It sits on the filler nozzle on the uh, vehicle. There's a corresponding ring on the filler nozzle on the gas pump. When these two rings come in close proximity, the FMU recognizes the vehicle. It knows which vehicle is, how much gas, um, how much fuel it, it can receive, like it's a 21 gallon tank. Um, and then it starts to interact with the vehicle's onboard computer and it'll start downloading information. The information it'll take off the vehicle is like odometer readings, engine run time, engine idle time, trouble codes, the max vehicle speed between fill-ups, oil levels and temperature, cooler, cooling temperature, battery voltage, on and on. The AIM is the easiest and most hands-free method of completing a fueling transaction while maximizing the benefits of a fuel management system. Now, all this data is stored in an FMU. Again, that gray T-shaped box there in the middle of the graphic. You know, this in, all, everything's stored in there until the supervisor of the fuel management system downloads the transactions to their computer. Once downloaded, the information can be tabulated, sorted, and reported in a meaningful manner. And these reports allow for easy fuel reconciliation, cross-departmental chargebacks, maintenance logs such as trouble codes, etc. All right, so again, let's just briefly cover like what are the benefits that you're gonna see with a fuel management system, all right? First, you will simply have more control over your fuel assets. You'll be more confident that the fuel you purchased to work for you will only be working for you. Better fuel economy. This seems kind of strange since a fuel management system is monitoring the fuel being pumped, but our clients have noticed significant increases in fuel economy in their vehicles. For example, vehicles that were getting six to seven miles per gallon jumped to 12 to 16 miles per gallon after fuel master with aims were installed on those vehicles. Now the system doesn't improve the efficiency of a vehicle, but it does make sure that the fuel being pumped doesn't wind up in another vehicle. Now we suspect that the people driving those vehicles started to use them appropriately and fuel them appropriately. So there's no more pulling the personal vehicle behind the work truck when no one was looking or making unnecessarily long out of the way trips for lunch or personal errands. The vehicles and fuel that were once again, they're once again being used for their intended purpose. Now the AIM RFID devices and managerial reporting are the main components that brought that about. We also have more security. A working fuel management system, especially one using a hands-free device like the AIM, it eliminates unauthorized vehicles from receiving fuel. Now, Syntec in the city of Tallahassee, they did a return on investment study. And as part of their study, they calculated unaccounted for fuel. 
loss. Now, before implementing Fuel Master, the city was losing track of about 10% of their fuel. They initially rolled out Fuel Master with the Pro Keys, that little USB key that I described with the plastic housing. They used Pro Keys first, and they cut the fuel loss from 10% down to 2.5%. Then they did the AIM devices on all their vehicles, and they reduced that loss to essentially zero. 10% of their fuel in this case, their fuel for their fuel budget, 10% represented $400,000. $400,000 is what they saved by putting in a fuel management system. It also allowed for better accountability. How many times have you tried to complete a month or year-end fuel reconciliation report only to find out that the data you have is bad, has holes, or is completely non-existent? That can make audits pretty uncomfortable as regulatory agencies do not tend to have a good sense of humor with answers like, I don't have it, or I don't know. You know, a well-implemented fuel management system solves these problems quickly with a few mouse clicks and a high degree of accuracy. And finally, better fleet maintenance. That AIM device is just essential to getting all the best information you can out of a vehicle and allowing you to really manage your fleet effectively and quickly. Now, one final point before we close and take a few questions, and this is specifically for any of you that work for a municipal government, I strongly recommend taking the following four steps during the very early stages of considering a fuel management system. First, do your homework. Find out how many vehicles you have, how much fuel you use every year, and what's the cost of that fuel. Then multiply the cost of that fuel by five to 10%. That range, five to 10%, that's approximately the range of unaccounted for fuel loss in municipalities with antiquated fuel management systems. And I mean clipboards and pens or, you know, broken or easily circumvented fuel management systems. That five to 10% number gives you a great starting point for calculating a return on investment. So even though a fuel management system can save you vehicle maintenance headaches, staff time, and other cost saving measures, the five to 10% of fuel lost each year will have the biggest impact on the bottom line and the most obvious number to, to point to when discussing implementing a fuel management system with the higher ups of your municipality. Second, Meet with your comptroller and your municipality's chief executive. Buy into this idea from the top and the money manager is absolutely critical to successful implementation. Third, hold an open roundtable discussion with the heads of every department within the municipality who may be impacted by a municipal-wide implementation. Now, these people would be anyone with the fueling tanks on their departmental facility who have fleet vehicles requiring fuel. Everyone at the top levels of management has to be in support of the idea for it to go smoothly. You may not get 100% buy-in, but a majority is certainly needed. In my experience, if the chief, chief executive says, we're doing this, the idea will go forward. But you need buy-in from the top managers in order for it to go forward smoothly. Now, finally, ask your controller if this project can be done through a capital improvement bond. I have several reasons for this suggestion. First, the initial implementation won't have to come out of the municipality's operating budget. Second, the payback and the cost of implementation can be spread out over several years. Third, implementing a fuel management system could help sustain or improve your municipality's bond rating. Your comptroller would be most interested in this part. Showing a bond council that the municipality is requesting funding to directly control costs, better manage its assets, and have a positive impact on the environment for many years beyond the payback of the initial investment is absolutely sweet music to money management ears. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation about the benefits of a fuel management system. I'd like to take a few questions if any of you have any, and we'll wrap up. Okay, the first question that we have is from James. He asks, how does a fuel management system work and how much is it going to cost me? Oh, the cost, yeah. Well, well, James, that's, uh, that's obviously a tricky question. So there are many options that impact price, like the condition of the dispensers and whether they have to be retrofitted or just outright replaced. Uh, the cost of construction that's required to put the fuel management unit on the island, connect it up with electricity, et cetera. Um, and then decisions like whether you're gonna use a fleet card or a pro key or the hands-free aim devices. So I'm gonna have to answer this a little more generally. Um, take, for example, a municipal client we're working with we're currently retrofitting 16 of their fueling locations and outfitting 1,500 of their vehicles with the hands-free AIM-2 devices. Now the turnkey cost, and that includes design, bid documents, because we're a municipality, the bidding procedure management, construction, equipment, 
IT implementation. They're doing a central database to um, access all 16 sites and kind of merge all their data. Uh, on all the services that uh, go along with that, training ex included, it's going to cost them just over a million dollars for a turnkey solution. Again, turnkey. So we're talking about lots of moving pieces here, lots of departments, several sites. Uh, but they're expecting a return on their investment. I think this is really the key to the investment that you're making. The, uh, they're expecting a return on their investment in two years. Let me say that again. They're going to make a $1 million turnkey investment and they're going to see a return on two years. Two years. After that two years, they're going to continue to reap the benefits of that fuel management system across all 16 sites. So, you know, is it worth it? Well, I mean, what else have you done that's given you a return on your investment in two years? Okay, the next question that we have is from Tracy. She says, we are considering implementing a fuel management system. Could you explain further on how we would see savings? Sure, well, besides some of the, you know, that's a good question. So there are obviously just cutting down fuel losses one way, um, but there are other ways. Uh, for example, labor time. Uh, it seems kind of odd, but you know, if you have those aim devices on those vehicles, the driver can get out put the uh, gas nozzle right in the truck and just start fueling, you know, because it, it automatically recognizes the vehicle. So you're cutting down on either the driver or the fueler's time to perform the data entry needed, like read the odometer, remember the odometer reading, punch the odometer in, you know, or write it down or whatever. I mean, they just fuel and go. You know, so that's one way. Uh, also maintenance scheduling, you know, instead of having the maintenance supervisor have to hand check the vehicle's odometers for mileage and hours, Again, it's just automatic. Uh, data importation into a central database. You know, just by having that kind of automatic process set up will reduce time when uh, to get the data into the system, but then it's also more easy, easy, it's a lot easier to just get it out so that you can run your reports and produce the information that you need. And finally, I would say, you know, improved vehicle utilization. Uh, it increases efficiency. You know, you're using the vehicles more efficiently and um, more appropriately, or at least you're able to track whether or not they're being used efficiently and appropriately. And that'll you'll see savings there as well. Okay. And the last question that I see is from Robert. He says, how difficult is it to get a fuel management system up and running? And then he says, in terms of time and construction. Uh, Great question. Great question. Uh, again, that kind of is like a moving target. But so let me kind of answer and tell you that there's like two components that you have to um, balance out. The first being, and this is the one where you could actually spend the most time, but it's the coordination of decision makers. That's going to take your most time. You know, um, if you're a municipality with a large board, with a lot of uh, commissioners or executives, um, that all have to come into consensus, uh, that, that's going to take you time to get them together to decide, yes, we want to do this. Now let's go through the process that is bidding process for municipalities to get it, uh, to get it going. Once that's approved, then it's actually pretty quick. Uh, the construction and build is very quick. I mean, I'd say it takes a week or two maybe per site. Um, the, you know, I mean, because you really just have to put the fuel management unit on, figure out how to run electrical and, you know, repair the pavement, et cetera, and then connect it into like some kind of IT network or back to a computer. So, um, you know, if you're a private company and you can make decisions very quickly, you're looking at about a week or two turnaround. Um, if you're a municipality, slightly longer, but mainly because of the bidding process. So great question though. All right, well, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you uh, listening in. If you have any questions that you think of that I didn't answer here, please feel free to email me. My email address is on the slide or pick up the phone and give me a call either way. So thank you again. Have a good day.